Hey, Sammy, welcome to the His and Her Money Show. Yes, thank you for having me. Glad to have you here because you've done something that people are really, 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 really wanting to do, and that is you have kicked debt to the curb. And so we're excited that you're here to kind of talk about your story and your journey. And before we do that, though, can you just take a moment and say hello to everyone and let them know what you're all about? Yeah. So first of all, thank you for having me. I am a huge fan of y'all's. I love what you guys do. I love how you guys do this as a couple. I just think that is like, that is so inspiring because you always see like one side or the other. You don't very, very often see a husband and a wife. So I think that's, that's really inspiring. So I'll say that first. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm Sammy Womack, um, and I am from a sunny side up life. Most importantly, I am a wife to my high school sweetheart, Daniel. We have been married for, um, almost 10 years in just a couple of months, 10 years. And I am also a homeschooling mom to our three daughters. Um, but other than that, I am also a budgeting coach and I am a motivational speaker. And like I said, I blog at a sunny side up life dot com. Uh, so basically what I'm all about is that now that our family uh, has become debt free and we have been able to gain that financial freedom, my passion has really become inspiring other families and helping them to live abundant lives through budgeting and also with little bits of intentional living and positive thinking along the way. So we do a lot more than just numbers. So we really get into the mindset. And I do that through my blog, my YouTube channel. Um, last year, I launched my budgeting course. And I just recently launched my own podcast. So that has been a lot of fun. And I can see why everyone loves podcasting because it is it was like the best medium. I am so excited to reach people through podcasting. So that's a little nutshell of who I am and what I do. <laughs> awesome. 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 So now there yeah. was a point in time where you were deep in debt, although you yeah. have uh, kicked debt out of your life. That wasn't your story at first. At first you had debt. So talk to us about the debt that you used to have. Talk to us about how much debt you were in the mm -hmm. type of debt that you had and how long it took you to get out of it. Right. So basically we got ourselves into this whole mess, really the classic way, just living beyond our means. We thought, you know, we were somebody, we were so fancy and we were just going to put on this front of this fake rich kind of life. And we just thought debt was so normal. And, you know, that you were successful if you had debt. Like we were one of those kind of people. We didn't really know any better. And when we finally totaled up our debt, it was approximately $490,000, which is a huge number, um, which did involve two houses and a piece of land. And mind you, when we started this, we were 25 and 28. So about five years ago when we started our journey, that is a lot of debt for two people in their mid twenties <laughs> to have. Uh, so we had our old house that we had turned into a rent house, which is the stupidest thing you can ever do if you have zero dollars in savings account. Don't be a landlord if you have no <laughs> savings account. But everyone around us told us told us it was smart. So we did it. We bought a piece of land where I was going to grow a business that I ended up closing down. We were stuck with that piece of land and we had the home that we owned. Plus, you know, just credit cards, over 14,000 of that was credit cards. We had medical bills. We were right in the middle of having our kids during this time. So we had our, our second and our third during this time. Um, property taxes. We couldn't we couldn't even pay the property taxes on these three pieces of property. You know, they were three or four years behind. We had IRS bills, some other small debts, just you name it. We were just living way, way beyond our means, so... And it's been, um, it's been about four years since we started and we became debt free back in January. So awesome. yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Now Thank I think you. that sometimes when we, uh, good, good intentions can go wrong, right? Cause I'm mm -hmm. sure that you and your husband were thought that you were doing the right thing by becoming investors in a couple of 
right. real estate properties, right? It seemed like the intelligent, the smart, wise thing mm-hmm. to do, which it is if done properly, right? right? But it sounds like you all maybe over leveraged yourself or what do you think mm-hmm. kind of went wrong? What went haywire with the way that you all went about it? I just think that we thought we were somebody that we weren't. We thought we were a lot more successful than we were. And um, just our family around us was saying, this is the right thing to do. If you have a rental property, you know, you're going to have that guaranteed income. And if you, you buy this land and, and invest in it, we actually flipped it from residential raw land into commercial raw land. So we, we made a big profit on it. But just the five or six years worth of debt that we had to, you know, hold on to, it wasn't worth it at all. And we actually have a terrible real estate market in our area. So I don't even know why I thought that was a good idea. But, you know, you're young and you you think that it's smart. Everyone around you tells you that it's smart. And so you you do it. So what was the turning point? Because you had the mindset, we're going to invest in real estate. We're going to build wealth. And then something change to where you said like, whoa, we're doing this all wrong. We have made a mess and we need to change things. What was the pivotal point or points that kind of mm-hmm. shifted the way you guys were thinking about what you were doing? Well, really our ultimate rock bottom point was I was a couple of days away from having our second daughter and my husband actually works offshore. So we're in Texas. He works off the East Coast and he had to fly home for her to be born. And we didn't have the money for the flight. Uh, babies give you nine months warning. So why did we not <laughs> have money and save? We had, we had no money in savings. Uh, so much so that our credit cards were almost maxed out. We maxed out our last credit card to get him home for her birth. And otherwise he would have missed it. And here I am nine months pregnant, bawling my eyes out about thinking I'm about to give birth without my husband beside me. And I just thought, what are we doing? We are about to be the parents of two children. And this is the life all the while living in a 3,200 square foot house, a gorgeous house that looked perfect on the outside. And I was just like, this is fake. And what are we doing? We need to grow up. And it was really the darkest year of our marriage because, you know, your marriage takes all of that stress and, you know, we were really feeling it. And it was even nine or 10 months after that rock bottom before we actually made our first budget and actually stuck to it. So we really stayed at rock bottom for nearly a year. And it was just, it was a very, very dark year when we look back on it. And that's not really the memory you want of your daughter's first year of life. So it just, it really woke us up. So, you know, talk to us about now that you realize your eyes are open a bit, you and your husband, like we need to make some adjustments. Um, That's not easy because going from a mindset of let's get some property, let's build wealth, let's use debt to do it all. Let's finance our, our, our wealth building Mm -hmm. strategies to, we need to get out of debt. That's not an easy mental shift. You talked before about, how your platform isn't just all about the numbers, it's about Mm -hmm. your mentality. So how did you and your husband change? Because I think that a lot of people know they need to do something different with their Mm -hmm. money and the way they're handling it. And that is becomes more of a fleeting thought, right? Because then when it when it comes time to make a change, an actual change, that's tough to flip. It's hard. Yes. Talk to us about how you and your husband were able to do so. So I think that like anything, it is a, it is a slow journey and it is about taking those little steps. And of course, you know, this didn't happen overnight. We even budgeted for about three months before we were even brave enough to add up our debt. That is how scared we were of our debt total. And it was just, it started with you know, we're going to, we're going to just stay home more. We're not going to go out to eat as much. And my husband wasn't on board for this. He was like, I work really hard. I want to buy what I want to buy. This is not fun. And then he just, after a couple of months, he started to see, oh, hey, she's kind of onto something here. And, and then we kind of, we sat down, we made a goals list together, that whole thing of like, okay, if we really behave, we can be here in X number of years, then we can be there in X number of years. And we really started to realize that it wasn't really about what we were giving up because especially my husband, he kept focusing on what we were giving up. 
and we started to really realize like this, is, like all the things that we were gaining and that we were, it started to really feel good when we started to make some traction and, you know, yeah, we gave up eating out. We haven't been on a fancy vacation in years. We ended up selling our huge house. Um, but really, you know, we've gained, we've gained that peace of mind and our marriage is stronger than it's ever been. And we now have actually a bright future and we feel like we have a purpose, um, for our family and we actually have something to look forward to. And I feel like having that future to look forward to and having a strong marriage, being able to sleep at night, I feel like all those things are way more important than fast food or vacations and things like that. You said something very important. You said that your husband was focusing on what you had to let go yes. for a period. And I think yeah. that a lot of people hear the word budget because we teach a course called Teach Me How to Budget where we try to mm -hmm. help overcome a lot of that. But for a lot of people, even before they get to budget number one, when they hear the word budget, all they mm -hmm. think about is I have to give up life, fun, the things yeah. I want. So yeah. your husband actually did feel that way. Mm -hmm. What do you think was the biggest factor in him changing the way that he thought? Was it just once he finally saw the traction, like you said, but yeah. I mean, there was a period there where he wasn't feeling it. So like, how did you, as the one who could kind of see the light, the end of the tunnel before he did, how did you not become discouraged and keep yourself motivated I, and bring him with you? It was really hard, but you know, I, which is what I tell you, my audience all the time is just go into it very lovingly and keep try. even though it's hard, you know, a lot of times in marriage, one of you has to be the one that goes first and to just be, you know, I had to be the leader in that part. And it was really hard to stay positive, but I just kept, I kept sharing the wins with him. I kept staying upbeat towards it because I had tried lecturing him before. Obviously, you know, we had been married for five or so years at this point and, uh, you know, we had tried to do things before and lecturing him, yelling at him, saying, you can't do this, taking his debit card away, that kind of stuff. It wasn't working. So I was like, hey, let's try this new, like, be nice about it kind of thing. And I just went into it really lovingly. And I was like, you realize that my heart is for our family, right? My heart is for you. My heart is for our children. And I'm not doing this to be mean. And when we sat down and we made a goal sheet together, I think that was the first time that he really felt heard in his wants. And, you know, he really wanted a boat. He really wanted to upgrade his truck. And he really want, you know, all these things that he wanted. So we put it on the goal sheet. And last year we, we cash flowed a boat. And this past February, we cash flowed him an upgrade in truck. And he is a firm believer now because he is living and driving the proof that it works. And so when he saw on that goal sheet, hey, if I really, you know, get my act together in a couple of years, look what I'm going to have. I think he, when he saw it on paper, he, you know, he really started to feel motivated. So talk to us now that you are both kind of on the same page and he's seeing the wins and he's starting to get motivated. A lot of people need like practical advice okay mm -hmm. what did sammy and her husband do because right. you guys had a big old mountain of debt that you mm -hmm. guys were faced with so talk to us about some of the practical cuts additions whatever that you did to make this lofty goal a reality right so one of the first things we did is we did a zero-based budget and we uh we sent that money to debt on payday because we did not trust ourselves. We could not let it just sit in there. So on payday, it was gone into debt and eventually into savings now is the same thing we do now. And one of the really life altering things for us, we're we're not cash people. We try to do cash. We actually found out we spent more with cash. So we we're debit card people. We found out that's what worked for us. And we got two separate debit card accounts and we have one for our spending and we have one for our bills. And on payday, we transfer our spending money over to spending and what's in there is in there. When it's gone, it's gone. So we leave our bills, money in our bills account, our spending money in our spending account, anything left over, you know, goes to debt or savings, depending on where you are in your journey. And we figured that out a couple months into our journey and we were like, hey, there's there's something, something on this is going to work. And uh, that was really, that was a game changer for us. And then, you know, along the way, we 
we started to kind of adopt minimalism. We started to get really content. We started to realize, hey, we wasted a lot of money on all this stuff around us. This house is way too big. It is full of clutter. We, our kids aren't appreciating things the way we wanted them to. And so we started selling stuff like crazy and we ended up, you know, we sold our house. We ended up downsizing from 3,200 square feet and we are now in less than 750 square feet. So we're family of five in a two bedroom house now and we have completely adopted minimalism. So that was a really big strategy for us was um, first of all, just selling the stuff. That was a ton of money right there, thousands of dollars, literally. And then just living smaller and realizing that we really didn't need all that stuff and we didn't need that big of a house. So, yeah. What uh, resources did you find beneficial when selling your stuff? So we did all kinds of different strategies. Um, my family actually owns an auction house. So we sold a lot of things locally at the auction house, which was so great because they sell, you know, a wide variety of stuff. So if anybody listening look, can look up an auction house in their area to do consignment items, that was huge help for us. But we did a lot of things like we sold on Facebook. We sold on Craigslist, depending on what the things were. And right before we moved, we just had a big moving sale at our house. So we did a little bit of every platform, depending on what the items were. So any advice or best practices for people who've never done that before, who are now going to attempt it because of yeah. how it worked for you? Yeah. So first of all, I would look up auction houses in your area and you can go to a website called auctionzip.com and you can actually search by zip code and you can find a place, call them, ask them, what, what do you sell? What kind of commission rates do you charge? And a lot of times they're real reasonable, you know, 20, 30% is a small price to pay for basically dumping boxes somewhere and saying, Hey, sell my stuff. And, uh, so those are all over the country. And, um, you know, we really selling things on Facebook is work. And I think that if you treat it like a side hustle, you treat it like a job that it's worth it. A lot of people say, I don't want to deal with the public. I don't want to deal with no shows and things like that. I don't want people lowballing me and all that kind of stuff. But if you treat it like a side hustle, it's, it's pretty worth it. So Imagine a life where your money isn't strangled by mortgage payments. Imagine what you could do when you don't have to send them money that you work so hard for. Come get simple, powerful, and real solutions to eliminating monthly mortgage payments forever. America's number one money couple presents Crush My Mortgage. In this exclusive course, you will be equipped with strategies to help you move faster toward the promised land of owning your house free and clear. Learn strategies to help you in the areas of payment acceleration, extra income generation, and wealth creation, all to help you crush your mortgage. Visit crushmymortgage.com and get started today. Join us on the path to power, freedom, and legacy. That's crushmymortgage.com. Now, family and friends kind of mentored you all into accumulating the this real estate portfolio that you're now trying to get out of. Yeah. What was the response like when you guys made this pivot with your finances? Oh, goodness. So at first, people didn't really take us seriously. You know, oh, they're they're young. They don't you know, they'll know they'll realize that they can't live without debt. And uh, so we kind of started seeing that not really negative, but just kind of not, not very encouraging. So we really, the first year or so we really kept it to ourselves. We kind of just kept our head down. We kept our wins to ourselves. We, it was a very lonely journey. We didn't, obviously this was way before I started blogging. This was way before I knew there was a debt free community on Instagram. This was just us a very lonely kind of journey, only sharing with very, very close people. Um, not even really sharing with our parents or grandparents because they really didn't didn't understand what we were doing. And, you know, yeah, we got teased. We got a lot of like, well, is that in the budget, you know, and all those kind of jokes and stuff. And I think when we finally became 100 percent debt free, we had a lot of people that were like, I'm just kind of realizing that you guys really did this. And then we start, you know, we're cash flowing vehicles and people are just really kind of in shock. Like, 
Okay, so seriously, you really bought this in cash. So like all of it. So you really, yes, we really bought it in cash. And so there was a lot of shock. And now people, um, our family is all kind of starting to kind of get on the movement as well. So we were kind of the, the front runners for our family. So how tough was it? from a mental standpoint, number one, and then mm -hmm. from a financial standpoint, number two, to sell, get rid of your house? It was very emotional. And for us, it was so much more, um, it was very sentimental to us. My parents actually built the house and my dad was actually a home builder and he passed away. And my mom just, it was way too much house for her to keep. And she's like, would you guys like to keep this house in the family? Which is kind of how we got guilted, pressured into taking on a house that was too big for us. Um, and, you know, we got to this point where we really had to sit the family down and say, we tried to keep this house in the family, but this just isn't our dream anymore. And it was really, really hard, especially on my mom, because she wanted that house to stay in the family. But I think you just, you know, in your heart sometimes when it's just not for you anymore and you've got to be, you know, brave enough to stick your neck out. And even when you have your family kind of pushing against you, you've got to say, this isn't my dream anymore. And this is, you know, this is what I'm going to do. So it was a very hard decision on, on the emotional side, but on the practical side, we knew it was the right decision. So, so you went through that, right? It was mm -hmm. tough emotionally. You talked about how when you guys made the pivot, you were in a lonely place trying to figure this out. How did you keep your motivation up? How did you not lose your motivation as you were going through this tough process? So we really tried to stay focused on, for one, that goals list that we made. We were realizing, you know, we set a timeline for ourselves. We're very, we're both very driven. And when we say we're going to do something, we both usually do it. Uh, so we were very driven by that. And then we were very driven by our ultimate why, which is our family. And we're a homeschooling family. And we, our ultimate goal is to be together every single day. My husband works offshore, you know, so he's gone half of the year, is gone on and off. And we just kind of realized we don't want to live like this forever. We want to be together. We want to travel. We want to school our kids together. So we're, now we're really staying focused on that. We're staying focused on getting him retired before he's 45. And anytime we get discouraged, we always go back to that ultimate why, you know, doing better for our kids, keeping our family together. Um, and, you know, when we started to get unmotivated, really what we did was we would just kind of rekindle that conversation, bring that communication back up. And we really, which is one of the reasons why it strengthened our marriage so much. You know, we, we learned how to really communicate. We learned how to stick by each other through the hard times. We shared when we were excited. We shared when we were scared. We shared when we were unmotivated. We kept picking each other back up and really supporting each other throughout the whole thing. So, What do you think this whole process, this journey to debt freedom that you and your husband went on, how do you think it's affected uh, the outlook for the future of your three daughters? I think that it's completely changed what we had originally thought their life would be. Obviously our second and our third daughters don't know any different. Um, they don't know any different than being on a budget. They don't know any different than minimalism. Uh, they, you know, all that kind of stuff. And now, you know, I used to think when we had our first daughter that only super rich people sent their kids to college, you know, that's something doctors and lawyers and like, ultra successful people do not regular people like us, you know, regular people have to get student loans. And now that's just not the case. And now, you know, if they want to go to college, they want to open a business, whatever they want to do, we're going to have a savings account there ready for them. And that is completely changing. And not only that, just the fact that we have pulled them away so much from materialism and we've helped them realize that spending time with their family is ultimately the most important thing. You can't you can't buy that. You can't ever get that back. And um, their life is completely different than I ever thought that it would be. If you would have asked me, you know, when we had our first daughter, this is definitely not how I thought it would be. It is a million times better and more positive. A lot of people listening can't wait for the day to come for them. So describe mm -hmm. When the day came for you, 
when you are able to make your very last debt payment? Yeah. So our very last thing was when we sold our house that we were living in and our house had been, like I said, we have a terrible housing market here and our house was way overbuilt for the area. It was, there were hardly any comps in the area to even price it. And so our house was on the market for about a year and a half. Talk about pushing your patience, talk about teaching you how to wait. And it was a long, long year and a half of waiting. And we just knew that when that house finally sold, we would be debt free. So, you know, here we are in the closing of the house and we're both shaking and we're just feeling like, I just kept feeling like at any moment they're going to barge in and say, never mind, we don't want to buy it. Like, I just felt like it was too good to be true. And after we walked out, we were just like, so I guess that's it. It was very anticlimactic. Like you just, you signed your name a dozen times and that's it. And you're like all these years, all this work. And so you guys want to go get something to eat? Like it was just, we didn't know how to feel. And I couldn't for the rest of the day, I told, um, I told all my followers and stuff, you know, Hey, I'm going to do a live stream later and we're going to celebrate together. And I told my husband, I was like, I don't even know if I can say the words debt, debt free. Like I'm really struggling. He's like, just say it. We really, <laughs> we really are. So I was very, very in shock, but, um, but after the shock wore off, you know, it was amazing. <laughs> so what's next? What's the new goals that's on the horizon that you're trying to accomplish? So next for us, we are currently renting and living well below our means. We're living, um, around, on around half of our income. And right now we're saving to cash flow an RV and we want to travel. And since we homeschool, you know, we, our schedule is very open. And so we're going to do that probably by the end of the year, we should be able to cash flow that. And then we're going to really start buckling down to save, to build our custom dream home. And we want to retire my husband in the next 10 or 12 years or so. So after we kind of get settled in our house and start, you know, really knocking out that mortgage, which we got to go, you know, uh, but we're going to do that. And we're going to do it right from the first time. We're not going to, you know, invest in real estate like we did in the old days with no savings account with, you know, we're going to have a good down payment and do it, do it smart from the first time. So, yeah. Some people might have, uh, their ears might have perked up a little bit. <laughs> you said, uh, we want to retire my husband in 10 to 12 years or so. Yeah. They did the math and you're, uh, you're kind of young to say that you want to yeah. retire in 10 to 12 years. So wh how do you project that goal happening? What are some of the things so, that you all are going to do? Our really, our ultimate goal is to have him retired by the time he's 45. Uh, so we are doing pretty good with his 401k right now, and he's very blessed with the company that he works for. They contribute as well. And we have projected that at the rate that we're saving right now, at the rate that our 401k is returning, and the rate that we should be able to continue to save, uh, we should be at our net worth of around a million dollars by the time he is 45. So that is our goal. Obviously, he's not going to you know, just kick up and go play golf every day when he retires, officially retires, but get him off the water at least, get him home every day, get him into a job that's a hobby that he loves and, and something more like that. So yeah, we're um, saving, investing in our 401k, IRAs, all that good stuff, mutual funds and all that and just really living living on about half of our income that's really the key you know we didn't used to be that way so what's been the biggest lesson about life that you learned as a result of going through this process oh goodness basically i think the contentment you know it's it is like i said it is about so much more than just the money and at first you know on surface level everybody thinks oh all these budget debt free people all they think about is money 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 and it's really not and we learned about contentment and we learned about you know how to gain peace with yourself because you know you're on this debt free journey you're not out at the restaurants you're not on vacations you're at home or you're at work 
that's about it. And so you're kind of stuck, you know, you're, you're with yourself a lot. You're having quiet moments. You're really learning how to be present, how to be content, how to make the most out of what you have. And, um, you know, it was a debt free journey really breaks you down. It really, it really gets you into your deepest layers and you really figure out, you know, you have to work through what you got, what got you into that mess in the first place. You know, you've got to get to the root of the problem. You've got to understand yourself. You've got to, you know, like we learned so much about ourselves and each other and our spending habits. And, you know, it, it is about so much more than just the money. And it was really a heart and a soul journey, I think, more than anything at all. So, yeah. The average millionaire reads no less than two books per month. Do you have any book recommendations that you would give out to us that we should check out? Yeah, so I just read this great book. It's actually not even on Amazon. So anyone listening, you're getting a really ahead of the game. Um, so I just read this great book. It's called Master Your Money Mind, and it is by Amber Lilliestrom. And she's actually my business coach. And it's just available on her website right now. So if you give it a Google, you'll find it. But it's not even on Amazon yet. It just came out. It was amazing. And I cried and cried. It has journaling exercises in it. So it might be more for the ladies if you're into crying and journaling. <laughs> but yes, it was amazing. Um, but really, I am very into self-help books. So, you know, I'm very into getting into the mindset behind all of it. So the power of positive thinking was a huge game changer for me. Um, I read Cultivate by Laura Casey, another mentor that I really look up to, um, just Christian and very heart driven woman. And so a lot of that kind of mindset, self-help kind of books have been really what have helped me. And we'll be sure to have links to everything that Sammy has mentioned in the show notes of this episode. Sammy, if there's somebody who's listening who is glad that you and your husband were able to become debt free, they're just not sure if they have what it takes to become debt free. What words of encouragement would you offer to them if you had a chance to talk to them one on one? So one of my favorite quotes from the book Cultivate that I just mentioned is actually little by little progress adds up. And that quote, I think, affected me more than anything. And just really to remember that that little progress does add up. You know, you save a dollar here and there. You, you save it. You send it to debt, whatever it is. Just remember that that's one dollar closer to your goal. And to not discredit those little steps and that small progress because it, real, it, it does add up over time. Great, great advice. So, Sammy, tell everybody about your awesome website, YouTube channel, podcast, and everything yeah. you got going on. Yeah. So, you can find me at a sunnysideuplife.com. Uh, like I said, I just launched my podcast, a sunny side up life podcast. And of course, you know, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. Instagram is definitely my most active platform. I'm always on Insta stories where you can get to know me and my crazy children and our, our crazy life that we have and yeah, and on YouTube and everything. So all over the place. This has been super inspirational and we really yeah. appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to share your journey with our audience today. Thank you. Thank you so much.